Hello, today we're going to be talking about how to get the most out of your virtual instruments. Now, this is for both unpaid and paid, if anything, more for the unpaid because they can sound uh, the most sketchy, the most unrealistic. And so, if anything, these tips will help you out the most to make them sound as real as possible. And again, even for the paid ones, uh, if you don't use them properly, uh, they can sound quite bad, sometimes horrible, almost shotgun-like if you don't use them to their fullest. So today we're going to go through some quick tips really to help you get the most out of these virtual instruments. And we're going to be using a, a free instrument, one from Orchestral Tools. It's one of their Sign Factory ones. And specifically we're going to go with strings uh, because I feel it gives uh, a good example from both a long uh, sound and a short sound and what's nice with helix is that's what exactly what we get uh, it's a whole string ensemble so it's not individual instruments um, if anything my first recommendation actually before we even get into the instruments is try not to use ensemble patches <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm almost contradicting myself in this, but it is a free package. Um, I know Spitfire Audio, and I've done a lot of videos on this product, the um, BBC Symphony Orchestra. There's the free version. They have individual instruments. That's perfect because, of course, the more instruments you use, uh, even if, again, they are free, the more you use, the more samples you have to play with, the more variety of sounds. So even if you're trying to create an ensemble sound, if you use five individual instruments and you can use and apply all the tips we talk about today to those five individual instruments, you're going to get a more realistic sound than just doing it on one individual patch. But if you're lacking in that department, there's nothing wrong. This Helix patch is beautiful. Uh, I've talked about it in a few videos, but Let's jump straight in. My first tip uh, would be always to record your MIDI. So instead of just, you know, right clicking, creating a MIDI region and actually going in there and actually sticking all your MIDI uh, just through doing that, that's great and all, especially if you can't play the piano. I will talk about tips. I think that's the next point about how to make that sound good, but always try and record it because you'll get those little imperfections in there and it's those imperfections that make it sound real. So let's do a quick example and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's get rid of that. Let's just hit record. Uh, I'll stick a metronome on as well. So we've got a metronome on. That can help you keep in time. Uh, we're going to hit record and we're going to play a couple of chords. Now that was not in time at all and there's nothing wrong with that because we can easily drag and drop etc. So if we actually look at the MIDI we recorded, yes it's completely out of time but all I gotta do there is drag and then we're just gonna put these roughly where they're supposed to be. Another thing you can do is just this little quantize tool here press Q and you can, I'd never keep it at 100%. Always keep it, I don't know, roughly about 50. Let's see how that sounds. Probably not very good. There we go. And we can tell this one's a little bit not where I want it. So we're going to drag that over here. Quantize about 50. So if we actually look already, we can see different velocities right there. Just from recording, we don't have to manually do that. And different velocities between the two uh, notes that are playing at the same time. So one is kind of brought out a little bit more. You can see that particularly here. And you can make that even more extreme uh, depending on how many round robins or I guess how many dynamic uh, layers your sample library has as well. So it might not be brought out as much. Uh, another nice thing as well, this isn't quite on the dot, that's fine, slightly imperfect there. And we can see one note actually plays slightly after the other. That's great too, little imperfections. It's those little things that really bring it out. So if we now play that back. You can hear it going up and down and already we're getting such a nice realistic sound. It's always nice to check how many round robins you have. I know this one has a six, a nice variety and we have actually six dynamic layers as well. Uh, so those are always handy to look at. But if we actually go in on the MIDI, maybe even change it some more. Uh, a neat trick, if you press Control and Command, 
you can change the velocity layer without having to click it and go over here. Really nice little trick. So if we have this nice and really quiet, maybe make this a little bit louder. Let's offset that maybe ever so slightly a little bit more. And play the whole thing again. It's those little details, it's really getting into your MIDI and editing it that's going to make all the difference, especially with shorts, uh, spiccato, staccatos. And if you're actually going to be manually inputting uh, your MIDI, this is exactly what you need to do as well. So recording is a great way to start off. As you can see, we recorded it, a bit out of sync, doesn't matter. You can quantize it or really move it around. Always try to record if you can. If you can't and that you honestly don't have a keyboard, don't worry. Actually, if you don't have a keyboard and you can still play a little bit and try, if you go up here, uh, I think it's Windows, there is a beautiful little uh, musical typing. So you don't actually need a MIDI keyboard. I'd always re recommend getting a little one. Korg, do these tiny mini ones uh, about this size. This is the little fader thing I use. So you can get them about this size that you can plug into your computer and they're really cheap, 20, 30 quid, and they're really space efficient. As I said, if not, it's not hard to actually, uh, I know if you press command and click, you can put a note in. Uh, that's a, another little handy trick uh, to add things. And I always program on my mouse. I've got two side buttons up and down. So if we're not going to do typing, simply create a MIDI region, go in there, command, click. We're just going to do something like that. And you can probably already hear that shotgun effect right there. How can we make that better? Firstly, let's just do a chord. Multiple notes, give it more variation already. And velocity. So the command and control, click down at the same time. And if you just go through the arrow keys as well, that could be handy if using your mouse there. And maybe we really want to bring out the strong uh, the on the on the beat notes. So let's play that. See, already so much better than that first example we had. And now if we offset these ever so slightly, let's play that back. There we have it. We're already using our virtual instruments uh, better instead of just having this almost shotgun -y effect. So that's how to make your short sound better. Of course, recommend recording. If not, you can see how quickly we inputted notes. Uh, another little trick, if you want to copy and paste the line, highlight everything, press option and drag. I'll copy uh, that line, etc. Little tricks make your life a lot quicker. Right, so we're now going to move on to longs. So we're going to go back into our little patch here. And we're going to go and select the sustains here. Now, another thing to always check is look within your mixer and see if there are multiple mic positions. Um, some free ones do come with uh, multiple positions. So always check this uh, because, well, maybe you want the sound closer, maybe you want it further away. And another thing to note, if you do want it to sound further away, great, you can actually add a reverb as well uh, to add a bit of distance with it. And sometimes, especially with longs, adding a reverb can really help that tail end to help it sound a bit more realistic, to help the release sound less fake, uh, more legato-like. Um, sadly, we can't make it sound any closer, uh, really. Um, so we're kind of stuck with what we got there. But if you want it further, great, there's always reverb. And we'll look at that when we mess around with the long in a second. So let's delete what we've got there. We've got our long. Let's go into performance. I'm going to select poly just so you can see my dynamic fader. Um, this applies for every instrument, uh, free, within logic, paid. You'll normally have two sort of faders. One is the dynamic fader, which will go between 
uh, the different sample recordings. I know even the sounds within Logic, I did a whole video comparing Logic's with Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony Orchestra free version, uh, even Logic's has, I think, two dynamic layers with their sustains, I believe. Um, this one we can see we have three different recordings from quiet to loud and one nicely in the middle. And so this dynamic, which I have mapped to CC1, will go between these layers. Now, even if it doesn't have this at all, uh, I should also note that this is normally mapped to your mod wheel. Even if this isn't there, you can still control the expression, which is basically a volume slider. Uh, and even that will give you some variation. Uh, your dynamic, this is where all the beauty comes from, especially with the paid ones. I kind of veer away from the expression one even more and mostly focus on my dynamic one. But for this example, I'll just show you what the expression one does alone. So we're going to play a note. And I'm not using the dynamic, I'm just using expression. So this is simply just a posh volume. That's already creating variation there. So if you're just going to play a note, it's going to be boring. It's not going to work well within your mix if you want it coming in and out. A violin doesn't just permanently do that. So even just a bit of expression. Really brings out a melody, really brings out your longs line. Now, we're going to just focus on this dynamic one. I'm going to leave my expression at max. So we're going to go between these different samples. And you can see it almost goes to silence there. And well, you could hear it, the variation. You, you've got to make it feel as natural as possible. Take your time. Maybe don't start off playing and using your faders at the same time, especially if you don't have faders to play with. Uh, maybe just write in your melody and I will show you what you can do if you don't have a keyboard and, a, and some faders to mess with. So let's do the exact same thing. Uh, it's going to take more time, as you can already see. Uh, but we're going to try and do it now as if you've got no hardware, you're just sitting on your laptop and you're trying to do this. So we're going to create MIDI. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit and we're going to do a couple notes. Let's go and do some chords as well because chords make it a lot more interesting. I'm going to put an F. Basically just a D chord and we're going to let this D just kind of resonate throughout this. So right now, this is what we have. Let's go in here, go in performance. I'm going to put that at max. And that sounds nice and all. It's a nice sample, but we can do so much more with this as we've already kind of demonstrated. Now what's nice right now, uh, if you've written or recorded it in, you can just record it on the keyboard and then record it with your faders afterwards if you don't, uh, not quite used to multitasking. Um, but again, if we don't have anything, all I'm going to do is click A on my keyboard. This will bring up this little window here. Another way to get that up is this little button here. It's like a dot with some lines. It's called show or hide animations. And that will bring this up. So click A on your keyboard. And then we're going to go to this drop down, make sure it's region selected, not track. So that says region. Uh, at the moment, it says note velocity. We are going to go and select uh, specifically modulation. It should be uh, the fourth one down under MIDI. Now, this is going to bring up channel one modulation. We're going to click randomly inside here. And this right here will control this automation here for dynamic. It's CC1. If you get lost, it's easy to go in and you can see MIDI controls 0 to 63. You can see under CC1 it says modulation. And now we're going to control this. So let's create something interesting and see what happens. And you can mess around with this at your own free time to see what works best for you. Uh, generally, 
you will come up with your own patterns, what sounds good to you, but this is what I kind of like. Maybe we'll go a little bit more extreme there. So we can see that there. And that's what we've done. We're going to open this back up and we're going to just so that you can see it. And there we have it. So you can see that automation is being controlled by what we've done just there. And if we delete all that and just do what I was doing earlier and go back and record at all possible places, try and record. It makes things so much easier because you can see that it's quite linear, quite liney. Uh, if you're going to get a little fader as that little thing I showed you that I'm playing with right now, that's 20, 30 quid. So a little 20, 30 quid keyboard, a little 20, 30 quid key, um, MIDI fader. Can make a world of difference and really help you get started in this world so let's just record it so tap i'm gonna go i'm gonna hit right at the bottom so that's a little recording and that right there is exactly what i just did on my fader you can see that's a lot more interesting than those lines makes it sound a lot more real a lot more realistic and a lot more natural um makes a huge difference compared to when that's not there. And this is a free product and you can already hear how realistic and beautiful that already sounds. Oh, we've only just begun. I wonder if I wanted to make it sound a little bit further away. Well, let's add a reverb and we're going to use one of Logic's very own. Uh, my favorite is Space Designer. I love Space Designer. If you've seen any of my videos, this will be the free reverb I use. And my favorite sound, go to Large Spaces Halls. And my favorite reverb is this Ancient Church Plus. Don't know why, love this reverb. Um, what, if I ever have to use a free one. So I'm gonna turn that down to about minus 20. Let's just listen back to it now. Turn that off. That release is just so much more cleaner with that reverb and it just ties all the notes a little bit more cleaner together. Nice little fade there. Another way to actually do something similar, especially if it's not a clean ending, if we go back into the actual uh, product you're using. I know specifically with Sinewave we have this uh, envelope which you can extend this or even make it a little bit more. You can adjust it. Uh, not, not every product you can do that with so the tail reverb can really help. So my final tip and the final thing we'll talk about in this video is EQ. This is something you can do with any instrument, we literally just clicked on Logic's own EQ uh, to brighten the sound up, to make it sound less muddy. Of course, when you've got multiple instruments, this becomes even more important, depending what you want to bring out. And I find particularly with strings, they can be a little bit muddy in the mix, especially if you've got brass and percussion, uh, you really want to bring out that top end, this little bit up here. And so let's just listen to what happens when I add a little bit of EQ. You could hear that, that just brightens it up. and just really brings out that top end. And just that little tweak was quite evident and quite obvious. And you can mess around with this to really fit your needs and what your track specifically wants. But I find with a lot of string libraries, just a little bit of top end uh, can really just make a world of difference and always do it to ear, never just do it and go, eh, I can't tell if that's doing anything, that's completely pointless. Have a listen, go to the extremes. That's the point of learning, you know, there are rules, but at the end of the day, make it sound how you want it to sound. This is your music uh, 
and you can do whatever you want. I know people say, oh, don't do that, but maybe that's exactly the sound you're looking for. And so that's it, that's all the tips. So to go over, always try and record, even whether that's your shorts or longs, even if you're not quite the best, practice makes perfect. Even if it's just, you know, two notes, you're not doing, you don't have to do chords. Uh, or even if it's just a little pattern that you can do along to a beat with one note, just to create a little bit of variety or uh, to tap out a rhythm. You don't have to be great. That's why we've got this beautiful quantizing tool here. So always try and record your MIDI. Uh, it, these tools aren't too expensive, little keyboard, little MIDI controllers. Uh, Velocity, if you can't, always try and mess with the velocity. We talked about control and command. Clicking them together can help change that velocity. Doesn't do much with longs, only really shorts. Uh, we've talked about creating variation by maybe getting it slightly off the beat, uh, especially if you're doing some chords. Don't have them all lined up like soldiers. Have them a little bit dotted all over the place to create that imperfection. Um, not too much because that can be a bit like, eh, uh, I guess really always on the beat, always try and have one on the beat, especially within a chord, because you can go to the two, uh, two extremes. But if that's the sound you're looking for, go for it. Um, and then we've got our dynamic and expression faders, which I believe are CC1, uh, which is modulation. And then we have this expression here, which I believe is CC11. This will be on absolutely everything. Expression is a posh volume knob, while modulation really affects the dynamic layers, the different samples that are recorded from loud to quiet. Those two faders are really good to mess with. If you're really lucky, you'll have, as uh, with strings, you'll have a vibrato control as well, which can bring out even more, especially with your paid ones, 100% use it, because what are you paying for if you're not using everything within that library? Uh, when I talk about everything, I mean these different features from mic positions, from uh, vibrato for where it counts, uh, the release of the note, as we kind of talked about with the em within the envelope here. Uh, you can control that on separate uh, sample libraries. They have a specific knob for that uh, as well. Add reverb if you want it to be more distant. Don't be afraid to mess around with that. And finally, EQ. Mess around with that EQ. Uh, bring out, make it more bright. Is the sound sounding muddy to you? Have a little mess around with that as well. Really go into the nitty gritty details. The more you actually work on a patch of MIDI and try and really bring out the best of the virtual instrument, the better your piece will sound. And you need to do this with every single instrument. It's a time process. We'd all love to sit down with a full orchestra or uh, an ensemble and be able to record them. And if ever possible, even if you can just bring in your friend who plays the violin, kind of okay and record him. Even better, I know one of my first pieces uh, was all virtual instruments except the violin solo, because I had a friend at uni who played the violin. We recorded it, stuck it over the top, it made a world of difference. So if you can do that, great. If not, these are the tips and tricks that are gonna help you. I hope that's helped. We're gonna end the video there. I'll see you in the next one.